that's right, we've got our Tencent MCU talking. The PCBs I'm using came from PCBWay, and they've done a great job as always. There's a link to PCBWay in the description. Definitely worth checking out if you want some PCBs. Now, in the previous video, I used one of these very cheap SMD buzzers. We played some tunes using beeps and even got polyphonic tunes working. For these experiments, I'm using a small speaker. I'm using the same simple transistor driver circuit, and the code does work with the buzzer as well, but it is very quiet. The actual results are a lot better than I was expecting. We're really pushing the boundaries of what you can do with 16k of flash and 2k of RAM. The first example I played is just over 6 seconds of audio sampled at 8kHz. It's the famous sequence from 2001. Now uncompressed, 6 seconds of audio with 16 bits per sample should take up almost 94k. That's definitely not going to fit in our 16k of flash. We've also got to remember that this 16k of flash needs to be shared between our audio data and our playback code, so we really are limited on what we can do. So what are our options? We can go down to 8 bits per sample. We're using PWM to output the audio, so we're not going to get really high quality output. For these 6 seconds of audio data, that brings us down to just under 48k of audio data. That's still 3 times bigger than our flash. We need something a lot more aggressive. I've got a table here with our options. We could try 4-bit ADPCM. That does get us quite close to our target, and it's pretty simple to decode, so the decoding code doesn't take up much flash. The quite OK audio codec gets us even closer. It only needs 3.2 bits per sample, but it is a lot more complicated. 2-bit ADPCM is the definite winner. It only needs 2 bits per sample. That's a 4 to 1 compression ratio. This gets us well under the 16k limit, leaving us plenty of room for our code. It's also incredibly simple to implement. My playback code for 2-bit ADPCM is less than 2000 bytes. That leaves us a couple of K of headroom for any additional features we might want to add to the firmware. Now how does 2-bit ADPCM work? It's actually remarkably simple. Both the encoder and decoder share very similar logic. They both have a table of step sizes, and they keep track of an index into this table. When we encode the audio, we store a set of instructions on how to change the index into this step table. If the audio signal is changing rapidly, we move to a larger step size. If the signal is changing slowly, we move to a smaller step size. That's the adaptive side of things. You can see a small section of audio data here. Our predicted value closely follows the real signal. So I've made a handy tool here that will convert a WAV file into our 2-bit ADPCM format. So let's load some audio in. Let's just drag and drop it. So here's the original. Shall we play a game? And here's the 2-bit ADPCM encoded. Shall we play a game? And you can see here the compression rate. So the original size, 23K, is down to 5K. So a 4 to 1 compression ratio. So let's download these and load them onto the device and see how it sounds. So it should sound like this. Shall we play a game? Shall we play a game? And that's not bad. Pretty good. But what about the second example I played? That was around 10 seconds of someone talking. Surely that can't fit into our flash. Well, for that, I'm using the Talkie library. This is a software implementation of the LPC Texas Instrument speech synthesis architecture. This was used in chips such as the TMS-52220 and the TMS-5100. These were used a lot during the 80s as add-ons to home computers, like the BBC Micro, and in the very famous Speak and Spell. Now spell machine M A C H I N E. You are correct. It was also used in various arcade games. The original work on the Talkie library was done by Peter Knight, and then it was added to by Adafruit. This is a really cool library. There's a large amount of predefined vocab, and it takes up very little space. Pretty amazing stuff from a Tencent MCU. I did find some software that will create new LPC encoded data. There is Blue Wizard, which is a Mac application, and Python Wizard, which is the Python application. I had a few issues getting these both to work nicely, but in the end I did get them to run. 
but I fed both of these into an AI coding tool and it's created me a nice online version that you can use. This seems to work pretty well. I've also added a player so you can paste in LPC encoded data and play it back. This works really nicely. And of course, all of this works on our super cheap 10 cent MCU. Not bad. Uh -huh. 